What's up, Carbine 3D audience? Kevin Barnett here back in studio, and our favorite hand lettering artist, Erica Loach, is back with us again. If you remember, she was brand new to CNC and turned out an amazing first effort. She's been working on her skills and is back to share with you. If you've been thinking about getting into CNC, let Erica be an inspiration as to what's possible in a short period of time. Video one is linked in the description below. Here's Erica with her next project. Erica here from The Love Letter and I'm back with Carbide 3D to show you how I turned this handwritten recipe into a sign. So you know those recipes from your childhood, those smells, like maybe it's fresh baked cookies or maybe it's a warm apple pie and just smelling it can take you right back to your childhood in your mom's kitchen or your grandma's kitchen. That's what this recipe does for my husband. When we were engaged, his family gifted me some handwritten recipes to use after we got married and this apple pie was one of them. And this brings up so many happy memories for my husband and now it's bringing up super happy memories for me and my children as well since it, we associate it with the holidays and just all things fun and happy. And so I thought what better way to commemorate all the fun memories by putting it on a sign in his grandma's handwriting. But also I wanted to take it a step further. I like to change out my home decor all the time. So I thought, why not make this interchangeable? This backer has magnets on it and so does the faceplate. So I can change this out with any other sign that I can make on my CNC. And this backer was made of fence boards guys. And this is one quarter inch MDF. So affordable and so easy to do. And the sign comes together so quickly. So I am going to take you guys over to my iPad and show you how I digitize the recipe. And this is the easiest way that I have found to digitize a recipe. Super simple, super quick. And we're gonna throw this sign together and you guys are gonna be amazed at how easy this process is. And you're gonna wanna gift this to everyone that you know. So let's hop on over to the iPad and get designing. The very first thing I did was that I took a photo of the recipe and then I uploaded it to my iPad. I opened it up with the Procreate app and I used my Apple Pencil with a monoline brush to just trace right over the handwriting and digitize the recipe right then and there. The Procreate app is available in the App Store for Apple products and it's just a one-time fee of $10. But if you don't have an iPhone or an iPad, you can also download the Sketchbook app and that's completely free and it will work on Apple products and Android products as well. Now you can definitely do this with a design software, but anything that uses a trace function will pick up all of the lines and the noise and any stains on the background of the original recipe. And that will require a lot of time to go in and edit out all of those little details that you don't want included in your vectors. So I like to just go through and hand trace it. If you don't have an iPad, you can easily do this with just a piece of paper and either a light box or a piece of tracing paper over a printed recipe. Just lay it straight on top of it and I would trace it in a dark marker. You can then take a photo of it and convert that into a PNG on your computer and then take it into your favorite design software and use the trace function there. I've just found that this goes a lot quicker than using any of the online design softwares when the recipe really needs a lot of cleaning up. If digitizing the recipe yourself feels overwhelming, you can also hire a digital artist on Etsy to do it for you. Just type in recipe tracing service in the search box and you'll find that a lot of artists will do this for as low as $6 and they'll clean up the recipe for you and send over the SVG and it'll be all ready to use. When I was completely satisfied with the way my recipe looked, I exported it as a PNG over to my computer and opened it up in Carbide Create. From there, I was able to use the trace function to trace my image and voila, there's the recipe, all ready to go. I resized it to the size of my stock, which in this case was about 12 by 13, which is an odd size, but I really had to go by the size of the recipe and I wanted it to look really similar to the way it looked in the recipe book. So then I went to go create my tool pass and I had done many, many, many tests to figure out what the right tool path would be, what the right bit to use would be. So I decided to use an advanced V-carve with a 30 degree bit. 
at a 0.04 max depth. And I found that that turned out perfect. I always like to zoom in and look at my toolpaths just to see how the bit is going to be running and how the toolpath is going to be running. And then I like to look at the simulation in a few different stocks just to really look at the details and make sure that everything looks great. In my experience, I found the simulation to be about 98% correct. It helps you get a good look at whether you've chosen the right size bit for the amount of detail in your project and also if the depth of your carve is correct. It's also great for looking at the project from multiple angles to make sure you've assigned tool paths to all of the necessary vectors and that can save you from making errors. So once everything looked the way I liked it, I went ahead and exported my G-code and then I went to go get my backer ready. I used my favorite filler primer to spray down the MDF so that the pores in the MDF wouldn't absorb all of my paint right away. So I just do one coat of the filler primer, I let it cure, and then I go back over it with 220 grit sandpaper for a really smooth finish. Next, I used a white spray paint, and I would just like to let it be known that it was 104 degrees while I was doing this. It was so hot, and it is super important to pay attention to heat index on the spray paint and I am outside the heat index all summer long. It's way too hot for me to be spray painting, but the remedy for this I've found is to spray paint my backers or whatever pieces I'm working on as quickly as I can with an even coat, bring it inside, let it cure for an hour, take it back outside, do another coat if necessary, and then let it dry inside all night long. When my white paint had fully cured, I put on a few coats of polyacrylic to seal the entire piece and let that cure. Then I took it over to my Shapeoko 4 XXL and got started. I did mask my entire piece with blue painter's tape thinking this would reduce the amount of tear out in my letters while also making it easier to stain the writing in the end, but really it was just a huge hassle to peel off all the tape, so I would definitely skip this step the next time around. I also taped my stock to a piece of MDF using double-sided carpet tape and then used clamps to hold down the piece of MDF and I did this because my recipe was carving so close to the edges of my stock that I didn't want to risk cutting into my clamps. So you'll see that this doesn't look like it's clamped down, but it is. Now whenever I was done with it, it looked great. The carving came out wonderful and you can definitely leave it as is because there is a variation between the white and the color of the MDF, but I like the black on white. So I took a black stain and just put it into all of my lettering and really made sure that it was absorbing the stain. And this is about the time in my project where I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? I have ruined it. But I just pushed through and I wiped off all of the stain best I could with a rag and then I took mineral spirits and it thins out all of that stain that's on the top layer and takes it all off until you are left with a smooth white surface with the black lettering and it looked awesome. Now my last step was to plane my fence boards. I cut my fence board into fourths. I really only needed three pieces. And it looked pretty rough to begin with, but once I planed it a few times, they were so smooth and so beautiful. I didn't even need to stain them because I loved the wood grain color and the variation that it brought to the piece. So I took some wood glue and I painted the edges of my boards and then I clamped them together and left them overnight so that they would dry. And you can definitely use these boards to make a mitered frame with edges. I just really liked the look of this just being a single piece backer as opposed to a framed piece, but I think it would look great either way. Once my glue was completely dry, I took my boards over to my drill press and I just drilled in some indentions for my magnets. Now you can definitely do this with your CNC. You can do it with a regular drill. I just had the drill press on hand. Then I glued each of my magnets into their indentions and onto the back of my white piece with E6000 glue. Now these magnets were not strong enough. These are the ones that I have videoed, but I ended up using these small, teeny tiny rare earth silver magnets that were a lot stronger to hold up the sign. So here is my finished product. As you can see, it came together and it looks so great. And I can hardly tell that these were even fence boards before. It's amazing what a planer and some sandpaper can do. I just think it turned out awesome. Now, I would be lying if I didn't tell you guys about the hiccups along the way. I had some bumps in the road. I had to start the project over. I had originally intended to do this project with plywood. That's one quarter inch. It's super, super light, which was really appealing to me. The MDF was just a little bit heavier. 
but I just didn't love the carve that I was getting on it whenever I started to run the V-carve. And I ran so many tests, like so, so many. I This isn't even half of them. I ran them at various steps. I did V-carves, I did advanced V-carves, but this is why it's so important to run the tests because there were some depths that I was just really unhappy with and I got a lot of tear out and I had a lot of issues, but I'm glad that I powered through because it taught me a lot of lessons. And really, I feel more confident using my machine now, going into the future and doing similar designs. So all that to say, if you make something and you mess it up in the middle and you are super unhappy with it, just keep going, power through and take note of the lessons that you're learning and use it in the future whenever you're making more designs and more signs. So thanks guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon and happy designing.